Yes, absolutely. I think I've just been drinking more. Mm -hmm. I'll try to sit here before I leave. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me a second while she gets you some more cool. water so you can continue. Okay, you got I'll, it. I'll call you back. Perfect. Sounds great. Okay.
Good morning, sisters. I'm glad to see you all. Welcome to our celebration. So happy to have you here. A couple of things before we begin our celebration. One, I'm happy to see that you all have worship aids. Does anyone not have a worship aid? I'm happy to bring you one. Okay. Uh, second thing, I'm sure most of you saw the sign-up list over here on the table by the door. Um, if you are interested in serving at all for the month of April or for Holy Week, uh, it's um, Palm Sunday, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, uh, please take a look at the list. We're still looking for people to help us serve uh, so that we can make our Triduum liturgy as vibrant as possible. Um, and we are, lastly, we're very fortunate and blessed to have Father Randy here with us today. Uh, Father Randy is, is a, a local diocesan priest, and he's a, a wonderful man and a wonderful priest, and we're just so happy and blessed to have him here. So on behalf of us here in our community, thank you very much for being here, Father Randy. Welcome. So that, uh, without further ado, please join us in singing, There is a Longing. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. It is important for all of us to be reminded once again that we are already loved. We already experienced the love of God. But when we embrace Jesus as part of our life, we see light. But when we choose the uh, wrong path, it blocks that light. So my brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves for, for the sacred mysteries, let us now acknowledge our sins and ask God for pardon and mercy for his full of love, gentleness, and compassion. Lord Jesus, you make us a new people. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ Eleison. Christ Eleison. Lord Jesus, you lead us to everlasting life. Kyrie Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. 
let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way in the wasteland rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches, for I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink the people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives from Zion, we were like people dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those who sow in tears shall reap much rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish 
that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks. says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him. And he sat down and taught them, then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I believe you 
you have experienced how to be dealing with people who knew you knew deep in your deep in your heart that when these people were trying to talk to you they would like to get something from you or they would like to put you in trouble that is very common experience among us even for those who have difficulty in communication they can still experience that because it is part of the reality that there are people who are very critical and their only intention when they talk to us is to find guess what find faults right not s not only a fault with s to find faults so what how do we deal with that do you think because you reach that age where where you are now you are very very wise now <laughs> they think many people like uh, when they they, uh, they 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 are talking to a priest they they believe that we are holy so when they see the holiness in us it means uh, it, it means that they don't see us clearly right what they see is other the other so uh, when they see holiness in you it means they don't see you really they don't really see you clearly what they see is the holiness of god if they see you clearly and they will start telling a lot of what what do you think lies and then gossip and everything that they will tell you you know uh, is not really authentic if they tell you something authentic it means they are angry they're mad at you sometimes you know like uh, authenticity seems to be harsh and uh, not all the time being authentic is demonstrating our openness to truth and justice so my brothers and sisters today we heard that jesus will never condemn will never condemn us what really condemned us is not jesus but ourselves especially the sins that we committed so going back to our catechism remember even you know we are being forgiven by god we still do our penance we still do a reparation for our sins we still do we still need to pay because forgiveness is restoring the friendship between god and us but we still have accountable for the consequences of the sins that's why there is a moment a period of purification given to us we are saved if we die reconciled with the lord but we can never see him face to face as long as we we still we still have any glimpse of imperfection so my brothers and sisters that is why it is very important for us to be fed by the sacraments because the sacraments act like food for our soul and it makes our soul healthy it makes our eyes spiritual eyes so clear because if our spiritual eyes are not so clear and are not so healthy when we look at Christ because he's so perfect we could never see him it's too strong for us just like looking at the sun 
or looking at glaring at uh, uh, at the uh, strong light, and then you know just a few seconds, you know everything will turn black, right? So the same thing in our spiritual life. I understand that judgment is important because how can we distinguish what is wrong and what is right if we don't have the capability to judge? So the context of not to judge others would be like this. When we start criticizing other people and put the person in one box, then we judge the person. So what should we do in order to avoid judging the person? So probably we should stop, you know, uh, we should stop saying like, oh, Sister Marie is gossiper. That is an act of judgment, being judgmental. Why? Because we put the person in the box. We connect that adjective to the person. So when we talk about gossiper, we always think, oh, that is sister, blah, blah, blah. Right? So Jesus does not want us to do that because there is only one judge. And the manner we judge people will be the same manner he will judge us. So we can see a God who is loving and merciful. That's why when, when we are in friendship with God, even we are sinful, Jesus will come to us as a loving and merciful Savior. But if we are not in the state of grace when we die, what does it mean? It means that we have unrepented mortal sin. Jesus will not come to us as a loving, merciful Savior, but He will come to us as a just judge. Same thing that will happen, you know, in the end, end times. Jesus will not come to us as a merciful and loving Savior. He will come to us as a just judge. So my brothers and sisters, once again, in today's gospel, we see the power of words of Jesus because when he commanded the Pharisees and the Sadducees to stone the woman from the elders to the youngest one, they left and they did not stone the woman. In a way, I believe that this Pharisees and Sadducees felt the power of Jesus' instruction and command. I invite all of you here to also feel the power of Jesus' words in the scriptures because his words can lead us to the right path. His words can inspire us. His words can heal us. But our sins will condemn us. Our sins will block us from receiving the tremendous graces that God prepared for us because they will block us. But if we have venial sin, by celebrating the Eucharist and receiving the Holy Communion, those venial sins will be washed out. And we can continue maintaining 
a holy and sound soul in us. But one thing that I would like to emphasize here is when Jesus look at us, he does not judge us. He sees our suffering because of the consequences of the sins. He can see how sins can destroy us. He can see how sins can make us miserable. He is looking at with great mercy and compassion. Can we do that also when we look at each other? Can we set aside our biases and judgment and allow ourselves to see also the pain, the suffering of the person because of sins? For example, how can we, how can we, you know, how can we understand someone who is always angry? If we try how to look at person the way Jesus looks at the, at look at the person, probably we can start controlling our emotions. Because normally when we are dealing or we are confronting with someone who is sinful, there is anger in us. There is a common, there is a common nature of a human being. But that's not our own, the, the totality of our identity. It is also common for us to see people with great compassion. Why? Because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's why if we don't have the Spirit of Jesus in us, then it is impossible for us to see the pain and suffering of other people. The word compassion derives from a Latin word, from two words, misericordia. Misere is from the word misery, and then cordia, cordia is the heart. So it is very important for us to uh, understand that when we look at other people, we should be looking at the image of God imprinted in that person. For that reason, even there is no reason for us to justify that that person deserve our respect, we respect that person because the image of Christ imprinted in that person deserves the respect and reverence from us. With great confidence, let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Constantial with the Father, through him all things were made, was men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. To God the Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our heart be directed for His will. It is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For the Holy Church of God, that the Lord may graciously watch over her and care for her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the peoples of the world, that the, wor the Lord may graciously preserve harmony among them. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who hold public office, let us call upon the power of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are oppressed by any kind of need, that the Lord may graciously grant them relief. Let us pray to the Lord. For healing, forgiveness, and unity in every family, let us pray to the Lord. For all the intentions recommended to our prayers by our donors, and in gratitude for their friendship and support, and especially today for the repose of the souls of those for whom prayers have been requested, and in particular today for Sister Barbara Caldwell and Sister Mary Rose Collette. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked us to remember them in this celebration, for the people that we promised that we will pray for them, we elevate their petitions to our loving Lord today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, let us call upon the judge of all humanity. Let us pray to the Lord. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that all, that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride. Contribute to the feeding of the poor and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. <laughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Oscar, our Bishop, Bishop P.J. McGraw, the Emeritus Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Oh, 
let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Bow your heads for the final blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord.